if I have to say my prayer before. Welcome everyone to Corpus Christi Parish on this Ash Wednesday. We gather today with sorrow for our sins and repentance, but also with great hope in the Lord's love and goodness. So let us stand and sing. Sisters, indeed, here at the beginning of these 40 days, we repent of our sins with ashes, remind, remembering that the world and all things are passing away, but the love of God is not passing away. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting, this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, Gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not let the hypocrites, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father will see in secret, will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, 
They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today we begin the disciplines of Lent, 40 days, recalling, of course, the 40 days of our Lord's fasting in the desert by which he um, was prepared for his ministry. He was driven by the Spirit into the desert, and he fasted and he prayed. And though he didn't explicitly give alms, he also was generous in coming to be with us. And the devil tempted him. The devil tempted him to turn stones into bread. And he, re, he uh, quoted the scriptures that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God and taught us fasting. And the devil tempted him to cast himself off the top of the temple to prove that he was the son of God. He said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, son of God and God himself, lived in relationship with God, and he wants us to live in a relationship with God. And so he's taught us prayer. And the devil took him to the top of the tall mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world uh, and that he could rule them all if only he would acknowledge the devil, uh, which would have been a good thing, right, to have the Lord as king of all the, wor of all the world. God himself, the man without sin, he would have been a good king over everything. Uh, so it wasn't a bad thing, it was a good thing. But the Lord, that wasn't what the Lord was here for. And so he put all the riches of all the world in their proper place. And so he taught us almsgiving. And during Lent, we too practice prayer and fasting and almsgiving, just as our Lord has taught us. This is also what he discusses today in the Gospels, prayer and fasting and almsgiving. And we do these things, these forms of penance, not because eating food or having things of the world um, are bad or because we're bad and need to be like punished or something. No. We undertake these penances because we are sorry for our sins and to want to do something concrete and physical to live that out, to show that is actually the most human reaction in the world. We think of that when we have hurt someone close to us. There's this need to show it somehow to express it somehow, to make it right. And so it's the most human thing in the world that when we are sorry for our sins, we want to express that. And we do that by prayer and fasting and almsgiving. We do it because we want to be in solidarity with our Lord, because our Lord is living his life in us. And because our Lord chose what was difficult and painful for the good of the world, he who was rich as God himself in heaven became poor for us, for our salvation, because he prayed always to the Father. And we want to live the life of Christ in our lives. And by prayer and fasting and almsgiving, we do that. And we do that because we need to discipline our bodies. Again, not because they're bad or evil, but because we are out of order by sin. And rather than what is true, determining what we ought to want and what we want, our love for God and of our neighbor, determining how we rule our appetites, so often we do the opposite, right? Our appetites determine what we want, and what we want determines what we think. And by Lent and discipline of prayer and fasting and almsgiving, we help to put ourselves in proper order so that we are in charge, <laughs> and the truth is in charge, and not my stomach or my eyes or other body parts. Um, and finally, prayer and fasting and almsgiving, our Lord promises us that these bear fruit here on earth and in eternal life. Our Lord promises us today in the gospel reading that these bear fruit in eternal life and that these bear fruit here on earth as well in grace is poured out on those for whom we pray, for whom we fast, for whom we give alms. Um, today, Pope Francis has asked us in a special way to pray and fast for peace in Ukraine. 
and though my prayers uh, and my fasting do not go directly to these people in Ukraine, we know by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that since we are joined to him who prayed, since we are joined to him who fasted, who suffered for the life of the world, that our prayer and fasting bears fruit. And so we pray and we fast and we give alms with confidence that they will not lose their reward if we do them for love of God. And today, Ash Wednesday in particular, we repent in sackcloth and ashes, as we heard in ashes in particular. Um, again, not because we're bad and need to, and everything we've done is useless or whatever, so we need to put ashes on ourselves, but because it is true that these things of the world are passing away. The good things of the world ultimately don't last. The bad things of the world don't either, thanks be to God. All these things which often distract us, including our own lives here on earth, will end and will pass away. And so we put ashes on ourselves, the end of all these things. But we remember that there is one thing that does not pass away, and that is the life of God and the love of God. And so these ashes are a sign to us of hope, even as they are also a sign to us of our own mortality, that we will die one day. And in prayer and fasting and almsgiving, we live that hope this Lenten season because we are joined to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life, who is eternal life, and who keeps the good that we have done safe for us as a treasure in heaven. So we are full of hope today, even as we repent of our sins, even as we acknowledge our mortality and that the things of this world pass away. Dear brothers and sisters, we humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes, which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who desire not the death of sinners, but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes, which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust, may through a steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for sins and newness of life after the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us change our garments to sackcloth and ashes. Let us fast and weep before the Lord, that our God, rich in mercy, might forgive our sins. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember you are dust.
O oh God, we ask today that you be merciful, and through these prayers help all people to be renewed in love of you, and we rise for our prayers of the faithful. For the church throughout the world, gathered in penance today, that in this season of renewal, all the faithful might be ambassadors for Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a world afflicted by evil, especially in Ukraine, that leaders of nations might come together to seek ways of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who do not see the consequences of evil they do, that the Lord would awaken their consciences and bring them to repentance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That our prayers, fasting, and alms might bring material and spiritual relief to the enslaved, hungry, and poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our parish and for each of us, that this season of penance will bring us closer to the Lord Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your mercy, hear these and all of our prayers. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And the Lord is your sacrifice to your hands to the grace and glory of his name for our good and good of all God's loving church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach him, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us to evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come to my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Just a few very brief announcements about this Lenten season. We remember that uh, every week of Lent, we have Stations of the Cross in, in Carter Lake on Monday evening, along with a soup supper. Here uh, at Queen of Apostles in English on Thursday night at 6 p.m. and on Friday night at 7 p.m. in Spanish. So after the fish fry comes the Stations of the Cross. Uh, we also have our Lenten retreat this Saturday morning, uh, starting with Mass at 8 in the morning for the first Saturday of the month, then a breakfast, and then our first speaker is at 9. So if 8 is a little too early for you, 9 is, is, the, is the backup time to come for a wonderful speaker. Father Victor Shinstock is the rector of Conception Seminary down in Missouri, and, he, and a Benedictine uh, monk and, and priest, and he will be coming to join us and give a talk and a reflection, it's gonna be really wonderful. So we remember this Lenten season, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving are not punishments we impose on ourselves, but ways that connect us to the Lord who has done these things for us and our salvation and that bear fruit in eternal life and draw us closer to him. So we ask God's blessing on our Lenten observances this year. The Lord be with you. Let us let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Bow down for the blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth song is number 434, Though the Mountains May Fall. <laughs> <laughs>